Well, a very warm welcome to all of you attending on uh, today's call. I am so excited that we have over 165 attendees uh, everywhere from the United States to Canada to Latin America to Europe and even some people dialing in at almost midnight in APAC. Um, so my name is Rick George. I am Senior Vice President of our Enterprise Division, which is our direct sales to the corporate market, primarily Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 uh, uh, corporations. And I am excited today to talk to you about a very hot topic uh, that we're hearing from our current customers as well as uh, prospective customers, uh, even uh, in our direct sales into uh, travel management companies and, uh, and travel consortiums. And so I uh, want to welcome you again to uh, our 2021 uh, April webinar. Now we're going to be talking today about uh, achieving a true cost or total cost of trip. Uh, why is this important? How can you do it? Um, and we're also going to dig a little bit deeper into what's going on with um, with uh, the the current uh, data strategy uh, that you have as uh, as a travel manager or a procurement professional. Um, where does that sit as we begin to come out of COVID? Um, where where did it sit last year as we were immersed in COVID with, with basically no travel taking place? And we will uh, do this in about 35 minutes. So uh, you'll uh, be uh, fast moving and uh, and be able to get on uh, with the rest of your day. Is uh, um, in, in terms of content, the premise of, of what I want to talk to you about today is, as we all know, business travel is returning. Uh, uh, you see the numbers increasing through the TSA checkpoints. You hear it on the news. You hear it uh, likely through through your own companies and, uh, uh, and your own travelers. But as business travel returns, it is returning to a, a, a new and very different landscape, right? Where uh, trip data and the metrics around travel are so, so very important, um, not only to satisfy human resources, to satisfy internal security, but also this overall duty to care, as we like to call it, um, in, in terms of taking best care and best operational practices for employees in your company um, that are considering travel or are actually uh, traveling. The other item, as I mentioned uh, just a couple of minutes ago that we want to uh, touch on also, is now that travel is returning, what happens to your existing data strategy? You know, how might you tweak it, how might you completely overhaul it, or maybe um, you are a travel manager that had a loosely managed travel program for whatever reason, or a moderately managed program, and now the world has changed and it needs to be tightly managed and, and, and tightly controlled. So what does that look like? But let's first dial back pre-2020 to let's say 2019. Um, and this would be, in our opinion, a typical trip cycle. Uh, somebody needs to travel, they book the trip, they take the trip, they return from the trip, expense through the expense report, and they go on about their business, you go on about your business and until the next trip happens. Well, you dial forward to where we sit today and things are definitely changed, correct? So you have this same employee that needs to consider meeting with a client. But is travel really necessary with everything that's happened over the past 12, 15 months with virtual meetings? Uh, the employee is approved for travel, but maybe they're nervous about traveling. Uh, they take the trip, but what health protocols are in place in the hotel that they're staying in, in the rental car, or maybe a ground transportation that they're taking? You know, what safety measures do they need to bring to the trip? Uh, and then also the employee returns from the trip and what happens after that? Uh, is there testing of, of some nature uh, and in terms of COVID testing following their return? Is that mandated by the company? Is it something that the individual employee does? These are all questions that are being asked uh, and, and very good questions uh, in at that. And also, if you take a look at the bigger picture from, from a dollar standpoint, if, if you look at the left-hand side of the screen, these were uh, some typical fees 
uh, some typical um, movements, shall we say, that are associated with a trip, right? From uh, a tip on an airport shuttle to a day pass in an airline club, maybe upgrade your flight, uh, tolls on a highway, maybe you see a movie in the hotel, uh, grab a uh, grab a, uh, um, a cocktail or something out of the mini bar in the hotel, and so these are all uh, costs that we know are typically associated with the trip. Back in the day when we were doing a lot of traveling, but you look at at today uh, through 2020 and uh, largely in, into where we are uh, even even today, on the right hand side of the screen where everything is virtual, virtual meetings, virtual calls. Uh, no in-person, a lot of companies have uh, really no concrete plans on when they will return to travel. So the dollar paradigm has shifted quite a bit where companies were spending significant amounts of money, significant travel reporting on their traveling populace, shall we say, to where we are uh, today and where we were in 2020, where everything was, was virtual. And so um, for clients of GRASP today, uh, or and, and actually also prospective clients that, that we talk to, you're probably familiar with what we call the travel data puzzle. Now, the six blocks that you see on your screen are different than what we will typically show because the paradigm has definitely changed. So in the world today, in our view, do you feel comfortable flying or driving or even rail if, uh, if, if you're in that part of the world? What about dining out? How do you handle that? Are you prepared? Do you feel comfortable to eat in a hotel? Eat in your hotel room? Do you have to be outside? Uh, what about the airport itself? Do you prefer larger airports, more regional airports, domestic, international? You know, what about traveling to uh, existing hotspots? Uh, not necessarily now, but uh, maybe in a month or two when, when, when travel is allowed. How do you feel about that? You could see the other items that uh, that are listed, the, the the one that's most curious in the conversations that uh, we had in uh, 2020 and having with many of our clients today is, well, what about in-person meetings? So let's say you are um, cleared by your company to travel uh, or you're a travel manager that says, yep, you know, we uh, we will allow you to to travel. Uh, but what is that meeting, that physical meeting look like? Are you meeting in the client's office? Are you meeting in an open space somewhere outside? Are you meeting in a hotel? What what does that look like? And in terms of the, you know, the meeting room or public space that you might be meeting in, and there's there's so so many variables that we just don't completely know the answers to right now. But it's certainly something that needs to be given thought, needs to be given pause, and needs to be worked into a total travel uh, plan. For, for your employees. And so the one thing that we know is that there's obviously challenges, right? From these changes in reporting and reporting protocols. So the, the typical travel manager, uh, human resources, procurement, shared services, you know, whomever might be using uh, our type of technology, the, the KPIs, the metrics, is now shifting to what metrics do I have available? to be able to monitor what is happening and what will be happening with, within my traveling populace. Uh, what are my duty to care priorities? Um, are we traveling only domestically? Are we traveling domestically and internationally? What does that look like? And also, how do I, how do I enforce either the existing policies or the new policies that we have in place around travel uh, and around uh, best protection for, uh, uh, for, for a COVID situation? The one thing that we are quite sure of, being in this business for 25 years, having hundreds of clients in uh, continents uh, all over the world, is the answer in large part to that question is data. Data, data, and more data. Could be GDS, uh, could be your traditional agency data, uh, uh, post-trip, maybe credit card, <clears throat> maybe be meetings management once meetings uh, start to uh, really kick in again. But we know that this um, remaining puzzle piece, if you will, is, is, around, uh, is around data and, and not just data for data's sake. So not just bringing in TMC data, 
not just bringing in credit card data, not just bringing in expense data, but it's what we call stitching the data together to create enhanced data portfolios. So looking at compliance, leakage reporting, you know, who is booking on your preferred carriers, who is absolutely staying in your preferred hotel because you know it is COVID secure, the testing protocols are, are in place, or who might be going, you know, quote unquote rogue and staying in a hotel that they prefer prefers or, or a, a car rental service that they prefer. So taking a look at this type of ancillary fee is, is super, super important as we uh, um, begin to ramp up the return to, uh, to travel. But then also exchange ticket fee reporting, uh, unused e-tickets. You know, how many of you I uh, had conversations with your airlines uh, in, uh, in in 2020 and you know maybe even into the first part of this year about uh, ticket refunds because the, the the travel just wasn't able to take place and 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 from what we know folks the airlines have uh, in in uh, most part have been very accommodating around uh, uh, cancel tickets, exchange tickets, et, et cetera. But uh, we also know that there are large banks, if you will, of unused tickets that are sitting out there. So how are they being monitored? What What's being done with them? So it's not just around individual data sources, but it, it's really the enhanced data that's going to be key as, as we continue to uh, move into a forward travel uh, posture. But then also, we suggest you need to look even further into the future around data that could identify high-risk travel, not just into areas where there may be COVID hotspots or COVID flare-ups, but it, it could be uh, terrorism, uh, it, it could be weather-related, it could be a combination of, uh, of all of the above. And um, part of the uh, uh, great sophistication of our technology is to be able to track all of this for you in, in a very comprehensive uh, duty-to-care dashboard. Uh, maybe it's questionable airline reporting, and, and not just airlines that are selling their middle seats, but uh, it, it could be airlines that have uh, questionable maintenance records or uh, fly into certain areas of, of the world that uh, are, are challenged due to, uh, to, to war and, and to conflict. And then you, you look even deeper into how is COVID going to be reported in the future? Um, how are passport and visa reporting is going to be done in the future, not just for expiration, but will it include COVID information, testing information? Uh, will it not? Because the ultimate goal is to really assure or reassure your employees that not only is it as safe as possible to travel if they need to travel, but also that you're able to essentially monitor them, um, not from a policing standpoint, but from a duty to care standpoint and make sure they are doing everything that they can to stay safe and, and to be able to conduct the business that needs to be conducted. So all that being said, you may be sitting there and saying, well, okay, so what do I do now? How do I make this happen? And so as, as I mentioned a, a few minutes ago, um, all of you have data strategies in, in one form form or another. Some may be more comprehensive than others. Uh, some may be uh, recently changed, recently modified. Some may be relatively the same that they were five years ago and just kind of taking a wait and see to how travel will, uh, will, will continue to roll out. But I wanted to share with you uh, what we consider um, the top 10 things for a perfect data strategy. And, and, and as I was preparing for uh, our time together today, this, uh, these were actually comments that I made several years ago at, uh, at a conference in Toronto, Canada. And, and sure, you know, some of the information has changed and, and uh, adjusted a little bit, but really the same principles that go into uh, reviewing and formulating and taking action on on a progressive travel data strategy is, is largely the same and, and probably even more in focus today in 2021 than it was back in, in, in 2019. And so why is this important? Because again, data drives all of this. Data is, is, is king, data is key. Um, data improves the overall cost of travel uh, because in our view, the best savings opportunity will come from within. 
taking a look at KPIs around department versus department, uh, business unit versus business unit, you know, looking at your supplier relationships, comparing one airline against another, one car rental company against another. But you need the data to be able to analyze the data to be able to come to the conclusions that you need. And also to keep in mind that the data is continuous. It's always changing. It's ever changing. Uh, and and even more so now as, as travel begins to return. So you really need a data strategy that is nimble, um, that maybe is modular, and that can grow and adapt as uh, things continue to uh, grow and adapt over over the coming months in 2021 and, and even in, in, in into next year. So all of that being said, uh, the first step that we suggest is to define your data strategy. Again, it may be one that you've had in place for quite a while, uh, or you may be tasked to come up with a more mandated or a fully mandated travel program now because of, uh, of what's happening. So we suggest to imagine what the future looks like. Take a crystal ball approach, if, if you will. Um, take a look maybe three years out or five years out. And, and sure, there's a lot of uncertainty with, within those time periods. But take a high level, a macro approach, and then work your way down. Establish a roadmap for what that future looks like and maybe the individual milestones or the individual hurdles, if you will, uh, that'll help you get to that point. And also, we mean no disrespect in, in, the, uh, in, in the top bullet uh, to our many, many travel management company uh, clients that we have throughout the world uh, who do a, a tremendous job with their client portfolios. But we will always believe that reporting through any travel management company is not a strategy. It is part of a strategy, but it's not a total and comprehensive strategy because you need the components that we were talking about earlier. You need the TMC reporting. You need the credit cards. You need the pre-trip. You need meetings management. You, you need your internal uh, type data in terms of your policies and procedures. So once this is all kind of put together, either on paper or in your mind, the second step is to create processes and procedures to identify what your end game will be. You know, where are you looking for this to be? And the end game can be several steps to the end game. So maybe as you're putting all of this together, uh, you may be looking at the next 90 days. And then from there, you're looking six months out or 12 months out or two years out or three years out. Um, the end game does not have to be just the finish line. There could be multiple steps to get you to that finish line. But as I mentioned earlier, we suggest start high level, where's your end game, and, and then work your way down to identify what processes and procedures and buy-ins from different divisions, different business units, different uh, vendors potentially, um, you need to have in place to be able to get you to that ultimate step to whatever that, that end game is. And then also realize that this quote unquote end game will likely change a number of times along the way. So stay nimble, uh, stay modular, and be able to uh, position yourself and in your program so that you can tact in one direction versus another relatively quickly. The third step is, is identifying what problem does this solve? And so we suggest building your data strategy as you would build or decorate a new home uh, or a backyard project as uh, probably so many of us have, have done over uh, the past 12 or 15 months. Um, start with the foundation and then grow that foundation over time. It may be in stages, it may be in steps, uh, it may be uh, in, in six month intervals, but start with the foundation which we believe is around travel management company data, credit card data, um, expense data in most cases, your, your, your internal systems, your, your uh, HR uh, structure, you know, possibly accounts payable, accounts receivable, and create a database around this and continue to feed the database and grow the database. And this is uh, what a company like Grasp is doing for all of our clients, whether they're corporations, whether they're travel management companies, 
creating the database, feeding the database, uh, making sure it is as accurate as, as, uh, as possible, and then giving you the viability through the reporting, which is the interactive dashboards and, and reports. And so this feeds well in, into point number four, to define your metrics, define your KPIs. And so once you've identified what your end game is, what's the win? Or maybe there's multiple wins to get you to the end game. And as, as we've been talking over our, our uh, past few minutes together, the data strategy in our suggestion should be fluid. Uh, you want to routine, uh, routinely meet with your constituents, uh, whether they're people on your staff, whether they're individuals uh, within your organization, such as procurement, human resources, uh, your infosec group, Information security group is playing a, a, a more key role than, than ever uh, we're, we're finding in, in terms of return to travel. Uh, but be aware that these initial metrics that, that you're defining may need to change or, or may need to uh, adapt or, or adjust. So the flexibility is, is really, really super important, we, we believe. And now you move into the fifth step, which is to identify and catalog these data elements. And, and so as we started our time here a, a little while ago, um, we talked about bringing in as much data as possible because the, the key, the king to this entire process is data. Consolidate a report on as much data as possible. Understand what its meaning is going to be and don't just work with it company to bring in data for data's sake. And, and what I mean by that is what I mentioned earlier, consolidating just travel management company data is not going to be an effective, long-reaching data strategy. Uh, credit card data solely by itself, expense data solely by itself, these data sources need to be consolidated. They need to be combined, stitched together, as I was talking about earlier, uh, and then effectively we're reported on through uh, interactive KPIs and, and, and dashboards. And so this is point number six, to establish a data store, to implement a solution like Grasp, hopefully Grasp, as, as I mentioned earlier, that can provision this data, can capture it, can consolidate it, uh, can do the rigor in terms of uh, normalizing it, cleansing the data. Uh, Grasp, we balance to the penny. Uh, no other of the people in, in our space in terms of competitors will do this. And so when the, the data, whether it's travel management company data and credit card and expense, or maybe you have 14 TMCs that you work with globally, when it hits your, uh, your dashboards and reports, it will be uh, e easy to understand. It will be um, visually very capable in terms of your KPIs and your KPI analysis, but then also you can share it through other parts of, of your organization. And so number seven uh, is to provision your storage. So package the data so it can be sh shared. Um, so many of the clients that we work with in the corporate space um, have many, many different departments that are are working with the data elements, the data sets that we are bringing in through, through our technology. It's not uh, any longer just a travel manager or his or her group or procurement. Uh, it could be shared services. It could be finance. It could be uh, your CFO. It could be your information security group. It, it could be your, uh, your, your sales leader because the data can be reported on in so, so, so many different ways that this really is a technology our grasp data technology that can perpetuate very significantly uh, through an organization and, and into many departments. But you always need to be thinking about security. And as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, the InfoSec group within uh, with, within uh, companies, likely your own company, is, uh, is, is very strong uh, in, in terms of looking at uh, what is PII uh, sensitive, PII critical, certainly GDPR. Uh, uh, and, and other privacy uh, uh, laws that uh, are either in place or probably will come into place. So work closely with your data security group, with your InfoSec group. And number eight, make sure that the data is as clean, as normalized, 
and as validated as it can possibly be. Because as, as we all know, travel data largely is imperfect. And that's no disrespect to uh, any source of data, one part of the world versus another part of the world. Travel data is very complex. And when you're receiving it from multiple providers, to be able to bring it all together and make it actionable through the dashboards and reports is a very, very complex process. Mapping to a corporate HR hierarchy so that you have filtering and sorting capability uh, through your reporting. It's a very, very complex uh, process. And, and uh, oftentimes when we're talking with prospective clients and we put together proposals that have hundreds of hours, literally hundreds and hundreds of hours of um, uh, implementation with our uh, with our uh, uh, DevOps group and with our project managers because this is very complex to get right. So make sure that the disparate data that's coming in from all of your different vendors can be cleansed, can be normalized, can be scored so that you have the utmost confidence when it pushes into your, your dashboards and, and reports. Number nine, establish governance. And what we mean by, by this is you want to make sure that you have clear policies and procedures in terms of who is able to log in to see this data, what are they able to see, what are they not able to see? Maybe these policies change from time to time. Maybe it's uh, one way in a certain part of the world with, uh, uh, with with divisions within your organization, and it's completely different in another part of the world with, with, with different divisions. Um, so you really need to, again, working with your legal, working with your human resources, have clear policies in place for this data usage, but then also to be able to effectively communicate um, changes, uh, program changes, program enhancements uh, that you may be looking to make or may find that are ineffective and maybe they, they need to be removed, uh, but make sure that they're effectively communicated throughout your organization. And then number 10 uh, is work with the best vendors that you can. And this may seem a little bit like uh, a statement of uh, of the obvious, but work only with best in class vendors. Don't compromise. Don't compromise on quality. Don't cut corners. Uh, don't settle for less than you need. Vet your vendors. You know, vet the resources and, and the references that, that they provide, and, and make sure that you, regardless of of what type of company, what vertical you're in, are, are working with the best. Um, companies and in the best folks that you can. Because in, in our view, spending money will ultimately save you money. And that may seem like a little bit of a paradox, but um, it's, it, it, it's very true that to implement these type of solutions does cost money for sure. Uh, but the, the, the insight um, that you'll gain from the KPIs, from the, the various compliance reports and leakage reports, and total cost of trip, being able to take a look at the entire trip life cycle from the time it's booked through the time the travel takes place to when it's ultimately expensed in, uh, in, in an expense report, that really is the holy grail of travel and, and really what we're here talking about today. Um, we haven't been able for largely the last 12 or 15 months to, to be able to have total cost of trip because nobody's been traveling or, or traveling has been very segmented or very limited. But uh, I cannot tell you the number of companies that my sales team is, uh, is talking to uh, about implementing total cost of trip. So bringing in as much data as possible and being able to piece it together, stitch it together to give you the, the compliance reports, the KPI metrics that uh, you need to be able to make best decisions. And so when we started our top 10, there were 10, but I'm gonna give you one extra as, uh, as, as extra credit. And, and, and that is um, to be patient, that developing a data strategy takes time to ch uh, change it a data strategy based upon the metrics that you're seeing, the KPIs that are reporting on takes time. Or if you've been tasked to overhaul 
your data strategy completely. Maybe as we started uh, talking about at the onset of the call, maybe uh, you had a loosely managed or unmanaged travel program, and now you have to move very quickly to a, a managed, fully managed, fully locked down travel program. It will take time and there will be changes along the way, but we suggest stay the course, know what your end game is, know the, the hurdles or the milestones in between to be able to get you to that end game and you will get there. And with companies like Grasp, we are here for you. We have the knowledge. We have hundreds and hundreds of years, over 600 years of experience in travel and in travel technology. And uh, uh, we have wonderful, wonderful clients and, and client partners uh, throughout the world uh, because of that. So we're, we're very, very lucky as, uh, as an organization. On that note, um, I will close and I will uh, definitely say thank you very much on behalf of all of my colleagues at uh, GRASP, uh, my sales team, and uh, certainly myself. Uh, we, we thank you very much for your time today. If you'd like to email questions directly to us, uh, you can uh, email me directly uh, or certainly reach us on our various uh, social media elements, uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, or our traditional website at uh, GRASP Tech. Dot com. We hope that this has been beneficial uh, for you, and we look forward to having you join a future uh, GRASP 2021 webinar. Have a good day, and thank you very much.